Hey guys. Let me make sure the camera doesn't fall over here. Hey guys, so I am out here hanging out with Violet. She's no longer in here. It feels so good to have my body back and to be able to breathe and I don't have excessive burping and acid reflux and all of the issues I was having, little feet in my ribs. Anyway, I'm three weeks out. Um, let's talk. So I also kind of need to update you guys about the pregnancy because it's just been so long. So the pregnancy was pretty <clears throat> exhausting like physically, like my brain just had a lot less activity I felt like and I everything felt difficult, like everything because I'd rather be resting or sleeping. And so uh, I also had a lot of nausea and difficulties at the end with eating because she was taking up my entire gut and um, everything would give me acid reflux or um, make me burp a bunch and it was just like oh my god I'm so full because the baby was taking up all the space for the food so towards the end there I got pretty uncomfortable and was hot you know you feel really vulnerable you're like man I'm carrying around a whole baby I hope I don't trip and fall I hope I you know I don't want to like accidentally get food poisoning or get bit by the wrong mosquito it's just a lot of stress not that having a newborn is <laughs> not stressful but um i am glad she's out and she's healthy uh, i'm really excited today to talk about the birth story and i think i'm gonna go ahead and just quickly talk about the pregnancy and move on to the birth story because that's really what i want to talk about today so the first 30 days i was actually on all fruit so the first 20 days I was hosting a 90-day uh, juice fast with a group and I was coaching them every single day in group meetings and uh, I did not plan to be pregnant while doing that because I was actually participating in my own challenge for once. So I was planning to do 90 days with them. So I did the first 20 days with them and every day I would lead the group and I would just feel so funky like oh, I can't remember what I was saying, must be detox. And I just kept going because actually I shared this on my social media platforms. The Raw Vegan Family is my name on Instagram. Looks like Violet's starting to wake up a little bit from her nap. But yeah, sorry, I haven't been getting much sleep as you might've guessed. So previously to this juice fast, I thought that I was pregnant because I felt it. I didn't pass, I didn't get a positive test or anything. I just thought 100% I'm pregnant. I've been pregnant with Dina. This is definitely pregnancy. So I went to the doctor and they actually told me that it was a false pregnancy. So then I went home and I juice fasted. I was like, well, I need to get rid of this belly, a little bit of belly that I was getting and the boobs I was getting because it just made me sad, you know, like it was sad. I had a miscarriage with my twin flame before, who is Violet's father um, now, <laughs> and um, I was just, it was kind of brought up that trauma of the past when we had had our miscarriage six years ago when um, I was still an addict. I've healed myself through juicing and raw food um, over the last five years to get to where I am today and I'm very, very happy now and I feel like my diet really helps me to control a positive environment in my life and to feel like I can handle anything that comes my way and to keep away depression and anxiety. So I did the 20 days and I was really hurting. I was like feeling like I was gonna black out. I threw up my juices sometimes. The juices didn't look appealing. I was fantasizing about like junk food and fast food and high fat foods and I was just like, I didn't know what was going on. I, like so many others, uh, got tricked by the white coats and I was like, you know, I'm not pregnant. I have a psychological um, disturbance that I made myself think I'm pregnant. And so this is how, you know, the medical industry really just throws us off of our intuition and we know best about our bodies. So um, I did that juice fast unintentionally pregnant and then on the 20th day, I was feeling really nauseous for like the fifth week in a row. I also went on a cruise, like the first week I was conceiving, I think. I had disembarkment syndrome after that, which means that I was nauseous and felt like I was on a boat. Everything was moving for about three weeks after I got off the cruise. 
all the while I didn't know it was because of the pregnancy. So it was just pretty miserable. The beginning uh, first trimester went to a doctor because I thought that I had a UTI on the 20th day of my juice fast. And he told me I was pregnant and UTI free. And um, I was really shocked actually. And so went home and had to re program my mind okay I am actually pregnant and now it's time to start eating so um, I tried to break my fast with fruits and uh, it, it just wasn't enough I felt nauseous I felt like I was gonna throw up so I went to the co-op near me and I walked around and no raw foods look good none and this usually never happens to me I love my raw food um, so I actually got this vegan pasta and some other vegan dishes that were heartier. I took them home and I ate them all, like in one day. I think I had like a pasta, vegan pasta, and then I had a sandwich, chickpea tuna sandwich or something. And then I had something else and something else, and I felt better. I felt better. So this changed my whole view, kind of, guys, because I'm always like saying less is more, and like the food is, you know, always bringing us down, and we have to eat light and juicy and here I am eating pasta and suddenly my nausea is completely gone for the first time in five weeks. So from there I was kind of off to the races like wow cool I can eat cooked food as a raw vegan and not feel sick for the first time in like a couple years because uh, a toxic body can handle toxicity but a non-toxic body can't so I wasn't able to really handle the cooked foods once I was so used to being raw for so many years. Uh, but this time it was having such a beneficial impact on me that I was like, forget it. I may as well just eat. And let me tell you that I had been doing extensive juice fasting and detoxification the whole year and a half prior. And I was at a very low weight when I started my pregnancy. I was um, underweight for, for me personally. And so I just was ravenous. I remember waking up at four in the morning going to my fridge and getting something and bringing it to my bed because I was so tired but so hungry and eating it with a fork in the dark in my bed at 4 a.m. and then going back to sleep because I needed calories right then and there. So this changed my perception. I had and still have a breatharian perspective for a lot of you know people but I think that for me pre with pregnancy if I had been breatharian or liquidarian for most of my life maybe I could handle a pregnancy with those circumstances in that diet but I wasn't you know I ate a normal diet for 29 30 years and I'm now 36 so uh yeah I ate whatever vegan healthy food I wanted for about three weeks and I started to have some digestive issues basically feeling like you know slow gassy and not good and it was time to switch back to the raw food I, I believe that my body just really wanted dense calories the fruits were coming in me and just being processed and used so quickly and I was underweight and small and I had done so much detoxing I just needed more for me personally and wasn't efficient enough to go through it as a liquidarian or breatharian but I do believe people can do that um, but for me it was best to just eat um, so then after that I transitioned to raw and sometimes I had some slip-ups I think I ate like cooked meal every two weeks for a while I'm fully raw again and I have been for some time but yeah so I'd say 95% of both my pregnancies were still raw vegan um, got back on yeah just continued to grow continued to be exhausted wanting to sleep so much uh, a lot of calm feelings calm when I shouldn't have been calm so many good cozy hormones having to pee all the time towards the end I'll have to make another video <laughs> the food the food was the biggest part of my pregnancy like today I need tomatoes and the next day I hated tomatoes I'd make a whole fridge of green juices one day and think I just need so much green juice and then the next day I don't want any green juice. It, it was like based on the moment. I was so intuitive. What do I need right now for Violet? Oh, I need carrot sticks and this, and I need pumpkin seeds, or I need a melon, I need a honeydew. You know, it was so specific. And I didn't have that with Nina um, because I hadn't done the gut cleansing that I had when I had Violet. So every day almost, it felt like I was going to pick up food and spending money on food, and it was pretty hard. <laughs> 
I felt like crazy, like so high maintenance. And if I went anywhere, I had to bring a whole cooler. Not much different than I am on a regular basis, but <laughs> more high maintenance um, than I normally am. So started bringing my own salad dressings to restaurants because it couldn't handle making any mistakes um, with oils in the dressings. Brought my own waters to restaurants because I could smell the chlorine again in the water just like when I was on the juice fast. But I finally got to my last weeks of pregnancy and I, lo and behold, go over just like with Nina, 11 days exactly. And on the 11th day late, um, my doula is like, come on girl, like why don't you initiate it with, uh, you know, the natural way. The babies go out the same way they come in. So that's the truth guys. She told us to like get it on and I had been scared to um, have intimate relations because I had had a recurring UTI at the end there. That was driving me nuts. But I was like, okay, that's in the past. We're moving on. I'm going to, you know, try this. So we did our thing and um, yeah, uh, I felt different almost immediately afterwards. My lower back seemed to have a lot of pressure and I was feeling waves, uh, not so much waves, which is a hypnobirthing term for contractions. Uh, I did hypnobirthing, so I prepped for labor with affirmations like, I'm going to have an easy birth. Um, that I would listen to at night before I would go to sleep every night for months and I did that with Nina too it works wonders look it up hypnobirthing or get in touch with me and I can coach you on how to do your own hypnobirthing um And I feed people um, and I serve others in that way and I teach and that's my my AA <laughs> so yeah I got into the kitchen and I put on some music my daughter was with me Nina my almost four-year-old for in October October 17th and I'm just food prepping I'm like dang I remember with Nina I was the hungriest I'd ever been after labor like right after labor and i ate this big vegan pasta because i did eat some cooked food back then and 
it was so satisfying. It was the hungriest I'd ever been. So I was like, I've got to have food. And like, if I'm going to make my perfect recipes, I have to make them myself. No one knows how to make my food better than me. A little moth just landed on the camera. So I was making like a fettuccine alfredo and a pesto pasta and salads and uh, dehydrated goods. And I was just going to town and the labor kept progressing. I did this for five hours, guys. I had the music going. I was hanging out with my family. I was cleaning the house. I was um, decluttering all while the waves were continuing to get more and more progressive and intense. And at first I was just in the kitchen, you know, like, and I'd be like, chop, 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 you know, lean on something, whoa, chop, 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 you know, like it was like every, it was like fi every five to eight minutes pretty quickly. And so I messaged in a group, my midwife and doula, and I said, hey, I'm having pretty consistent contractions. Um, but I'm still chill, I'm doing food prep, and I'm cleaning the house. And they're like, okay, don't time them yet. It's gonna, you know, be a while, you'll drive yourself crazy. So I'm like, okay, I'll stop. And then I'm like, this seems to be progressing really quickly. You know, I was in the safety of my own home. Nothing, the key to a good birth is to feel comfortable and feel safe. I was doing what I do every day, waking up, you know, I was intimate with my boyfriend. I took a bath. It was a weekend, I, I was, um, you know, playing with my daughter and uh, making my favorite foods in the kitchen on a beautiful sunny day. There was nothing scary about it. No one uh, making me feel like I was sick or there was an emergency. I was just enjoying my day, you know, in between the contractions, the waves. So then I kind of am starting to move around the house and I'm starting to moan like, oh, and my partner is like following me. Like, do you, do you need me? And I'm like, yeah. So. I hadn't really labored like this before, like as a team. And I, it got so intense that at one point I was like, I really want to bite something. And I thought about biting my partner, guys. he was taxing them you know like things seem like they're progressing so they were on their way at this point but it was going to take them like an hour and a half to arrive from the time we told them to come so i'm on the bed and i'm like think and i'm looking at him and all of a sudden just puke comes out and just throw up and i'm just looking at him and i didn't even heave and i was just i felt fine and i go i'm transitioning to hard labor 
this is what happened with Nina too. I threw up and I was transitioning to hard labor. So um, at that point, I definitely started feeling like I need to push and uh, I was completely out of my control, just big heaves. My partner said he saw me like clench up with every muscle in my body and turn red and then like push with everything I had. I kicked all the affirmations off the bed and I was like grabbing and like squeezing him. And then I uh, said like, I, I need to go to the tub. I think I need to go to the bathtub because that's where I like to give birth. That's where I gave birth to Nina. And so I'm walking to my bathroom and I'm like, I am crowning. I am crowning. Crowning means the baby's head is coming out. So as I'm walking, like my house is small, so it's already in the bathroom and I step and I feel the head. And I tell him, reach down and feel the head. Your baby's coming. And we're both just like alone in the house. You know, at this point I had had Nina's father pick her up and uh, take her home. She was with me for the first five hours of labor. I gave birth two hours after she left, but I just, you know, I just didn't want the added uncertainty um, with her there. So gave birth like 10 minutes later. After I crowned, she just kind of like slipped out. Like it was so much easier. I was in hard labor for two hours with Nina. So mommies who are on their second birth, just remember this story. Um, and so then I, yeah, I watched the head come out. I see the shoulders and then I see her whole body. Um, my partner catches her and puts her right on my chest. Um, and she was covered in heavy vernix, which is rare for someone who's gone late, which I don't even believe that I went late because I think they set it up that way so that you have to get more care and they rush things along, but that's another video. Um, so this was pretty epic. Then my midwife and my doula showed up and I birthed my placenta, which took longer than the first placenta. It wasn't as big as the first placenta. Handle it. Like I would have high calorie dense meals for a few days and then do low fat, high fruits for a few days. And then again, and that's kind of like just how my body is even when I'm not pregnant now that I've cleansed and fasted. Um, so my doula and my midwife were incredible. This whole time I had hypnobirthing playlists blasting in my house on a loudspeaker. I had an atomizer going with essential oils, candles lit, fairy lights. Um, I made the whole place kind of like into a spa, a salt rock lamp. And uh, they were just waiting for me to birth the placenta. Finally, that happened. And then they asked me if I want to get out of the bath. Um, they helped me to the bed. Um, we had like a shower curtain down on the bed and some other things to make sure that like, you know, it didn't ruin my bed, my mattress. And then they brought her to me and she started breastfeeding and I experienced golden hour, which is the hour after your baby's born. And my doula and my midwife just sat quietly on the bed and my partner and I just kind of like, you know, enjoyed our new baby in shock. <laughs> like, wow, she's really here. Um, and this was only at about five. She was born at 5.05 p.m. Eastern Standard, Standard Time in North Carolina at 5.65 pounds and 19 inches. And we named her Violet May. And she is here with us now. She is just amazing and perfect health. Uh, they checked her out and everything was good. So they just left and then I didn't have to go anywhere. I didn't have to unpack a bag. You know, I'm just here with my baby. Um, so all of that was a lot for me, um, as you can imagine. And this time I wasn't hungry right away. I was kind of still in this like fight or flight, like is everything okay mood. So everyone leaves and we're cleaned up, we're in bed. And uh, I got really hungry about 4 a.m got up, went to the kitchen and got myself some food. But the key to healing in postpartum is definitely to have your partner help you as much as possible. The least walking you can do, the better. Um, I have healed dramatically in the last three weeks and I'm feeling really good now. The only thing that really bothers me now is uh, 
the hormones. Sometimes I feel really off or grumpy. I'm sure it's the lack of sleep too. Um, I am sleeping in between feedings, uh, but she feeds a lot at night. She prefers to eat more at night than daytime right now. Um, I didn't cover everything I wanted to, but I'm really, really happy with my birthing experience. Definitely felt like I was on drugs and like just feeling incredible. And I'm really sad that women don't get to feel this because they take the uh, fentanyl, they're born with fentanyl, baby's born with fentanyl in the system, the woman's drugged up on fentanyl, and then, you know, you get the Pitocin, and you just don't get to feel those natural drugs, and that makes me really sad because they're amazing. Like, I was some, you know, I don't wanna go into labor today or anything. Uh, I'll wait, but um, time for my next baby. <laughs> Not something you wanna do every day, but it is, it was magical and out of this world and so then yeah i just rested with my family for the last three weeks slowly and i made my raw food and watching my body do these crazy things you know my milk came in breastfeeding's been a breeze compared to last time like i just know what to do she knows what to do everything's been great and if you have any questions or you'd like some coaching on natural birthing i am your girl you can do it everything is not as scary as an unnatural birth like a natural birth is not nearly as scary stress producing or just overall traumatic it was empowering the most empowering thing i've ever done be honest um, magical ecstatic I guess I've already said all these things I'm tired and I'd like to get more details to you guys on specific things like breastfeeding um, and preparing for a home birth but they will come when I am ready so thanks for listening today and uh, I really hope this all recorded right because I really want to you know talk and catch up with you guys it's been a while and expect more videos so if you're not already a subscriber please click subscribe down below and follow along because now that i'm eating a lot in abundance and i'm no longer liquidarian i'm going to have so many amazing recipe videos for you coming up and i've been practicing my raw vegan recipes for this year that i've been pregnant that has been top priority i told you i was food obsessed the whole time still am now that i'm breastfeeding and so i've been really honing in on my raw vegan recipes so stay tuned and make sure you hit that subscribe button and if you love me and you support my natural journey leave me a comment below i love your comments guys all right see you fam see you next time bye